Ah, February, the month that brings us the wonder of Valentine's Day. A time to celebrate the warmth of love, an opportunity to pledge our undying affection to the ones that hold our heartstrings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Valentine's. <clears throat> Apologies for that raw sentiment there. The only thing that Valentine's Day is good for, in my opinion, is to reinvigorate our lust for chocolate. So for this episode, I succumb and pledge my heart not to some BS yearly reminder of my morbid single life, uh, but no, to Luxembourg and its chocolates. So bordered by Belgium to the west and north, Germany to the east, and France to the south, in a hop, skip, and a jump away from the Dutch and Swiss, it's obvious why Luxembourg has enough chocolates to satisfy some of the most demanding of chocolate lovers. The city center is dotted with chocolate shops. The Belgian chocolate house on the Grand Rue sells some of the most famous Belgian chocolate brands, such as Neuhaus, Godiva, and Pierre Marcolini. And right across the street from the Belgian chocolate house is the more value-oriented Leonidas chocolates. And down the Avenue de la Porte Neuve is the upstart chocolate shop, Jeff de Bruges, started by a mad Frenchman making expensive Belgian chocolates. Now please, don't visit Luxembourg and spend time sampling Belgian and Swiss chocolates. No, 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 no. If you truly want to go all Luxembourg, you have to sample Luxembourg's very own Genève chocolates. Now, full disclosure, I have asked some of my French-speaking friends how to pronounce the brand. And as it turns out, it's not actually a French word. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it the American old-fashioned way here. Just, uh, just let it all hang out as I butcher most of the languages that are around Luxembourg. But I digress. Now, based on a little bit of Googling, Genève started somewhere in 2004 by then-owner uh, Geola Nave, with the Luxembourg chocolate business changing hands in early uh, 2018 to a young entrepreneur named uh, Alexandra Kahn. So the chocolates wrapped and boxed in very distinct and recognizable turquoise colors. The chocolate is distinctly Luxembourg, uh, small, charming, but high-end. You can find uh, Genève chocolates on shelves around the town, and there's an e-shop on the website to make it a little bit easier to order. But you know, for this episode, I want to take a short trip to the small shop located in the manufacturing facility, all the way out in the small town of uh, Steinfurt, Luxembourg. And this little escapade will be the stage on which to act out uh, this episode's watch review. So what would be an appropriate watch for this uh, chocolate mission, you might ask? Well, enter the Seiko SRPC-68. A Seiko diver with what else but a chocolate dial. So sometimes referred to as the bottle cap. It's uh, 45 millimeters wide with a thickness of about 13 millimeters. 47 millimeters lug to lug. Uh, it's powered by a 24 joule or R36 movement with a 40 hour power reserve. Uh, it's an automatic, but it has a manual winding and hacking. And while it seems to be a polarizing watch, I personally think that the chocolate dial contrasted with that gold toned steel bezel. Uh, it's just one of those watches that makes me smile. So Steinfurt, it's located near the Belgian border. It's about 45 minutes from Luxembourg City on bus. So a quick hop onto bus 222 takes you straight to the bustling town of Steinfurt. Population somewhere around 5,000. And I'd like to sit here and tell you that the bus ride was fantastic and exciting, but uh, it was nothing exciting. Occasionally looking down at the watch as the sun caught the golden bezel and the chocolate dial. That was pretty much the most exciting part of the uh, bus ride to Steinfurt. Now the area around Steinfurt has had uh, activity as far back as 44 AD with the uh, Celts and the Romans crisscrossing the land around the Aish River. These days uh, Steinfurt is a quaint little town with its Patton Square Memorial and the town administrative building. A small Catholic church sits across the street a little ways down, and all of this made for some great photo opportunities with the SRP-68 uh, on the way down to the Genève factory. So a quick 15 minute uh, walk from Patton Square down to the doorstep of the Genève factory 
quite interesting that this quiet little town is home to this unassuming little factory that makes some of Luxembourg's best chocolates. Uh, since I was visiting on a Saturday, I had to ring the doorbell to get a little help to get into the shop. Now, Genève apparently creates around 80 different recipes at this time. Still very much in its growth phase. Uh, it produces around 9 tons of chocolates from this factory in Steinfurt, Luxembourg each year. Now, for any normal human being, 9 tons of chocolate sounds like quite a lot. But you have to put it into perspective. Uh, the country of Belgium creates about 270,000 metric tons of chocolate a year. So what's the verdict on Genève chocolate? It's a must for any visitor at Luxembourg for sure. Granted, I was about 50 euros lighter after the trip. But you know, sometimes it's worth paying a little more for the good stuff. Now honestly, I'm no expert in chocolates. Uh, but uh, Genève chocolates? Definitely, I tasted fantastic. And quite worth the uh, trip to Steinfurt. And for my Seiko travel companion, you might ask? Oh, well, I have to say that it's a quite capable accomplice to my chocolate escapade there. Now, the SRPC68, it's definitely not a small watch. At uh, 45 millimeters, it can be a bit of a challenge to wear for people with smaller wrists. On the NATO strap that it comes with, it's about 95 grams. So uh, it actually becomes quite comfortable to wear and you don't really notice that it's there. And honestly, what's not to love about that dial? Combined with that gold-toned uh, unidirectional bezel and that golden bezel insert, it had a nice gleam and even on a cloudy day would uh, catch the eye. The uh, 4R36 is a capable movement and it has been since it was launched in uh, 2011. And while there's not that much embellishment in the back, uh, other than the markings on the uh, rotor, it's still pretty nice to take a peek through the uh, glass case back and look at the movement go. Now, as much as I love the watch, the crown sticking out about 3.5 millimeters makes it a little bit susceptible. Now add to this the fact that it doesn't have a screw down crown, and I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful here. And lastly, as pretty as the bezel is, I can see all kinds of scuffs and scratches in the new future. But even with these issues that I pointed out, um, I mean, it's a sub 200 euro watch. And that chocolate dial, I think it's easy to say that this watch is going to get plenty of rotation this year, and for years to come. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you had a little bit of fun exploring one of Luxembourg's charming homegrown chocolate companies, and a short review of the pretty and uh, capable Seiko SRPC68. Thanks for watching, and uh, keep practicing watch love, no matter what you're wearing. And don't let anybody else tell you otherwise, because in the immortal words of the great Humpty Hump of Digital Underground, do what you like. Peace.